Okay, in this video we're going to talk about bevel gears. So sometimes you'll see the name smiter gears and other times you'll see it as bevel gears. Um, but based on the terminology used in McMaster, when you see miter gears is usually a one-to-one -one speed ratio and then with bevel gears is anything that's not one-to-one. -one. So it could be two-to-one, five-to-one, or anything else. So for the previous examples with gears, we looked at the gear pitch. And usually the gear pitch is a number that has to match up so that the gap between all the teeth lines up correctly and the spacing is correct. Um, when you're dealing with metric gears, you look at the module. So module is defined as unit of size that indicates how big or small the gear is. And it's a ratio of the reference diameter of the gear divided by the number of teeth. So it's just another way of saying how, how much gap there is between each of the teeth on the gears. And when you're choosing it, um, when there's two different sizes, usually you'll see one that says gears and another one that says pinion, where pinion is usually going to be the smaller one. So if we're looking at a 2.5, maybe a 3 to 2 ratio one, uh, we could click that one that we'll use. And then perhaps a corresponding, so this one we could see is 2.5, right? 2.5 and 3 to 2, so the only other possible choice here is going to be this one. So if we look at the two uh, gears, we see that um, one of them has 20 teeth, and then the other one has 30, which will give us a 3 to 2 ratio. And if we look here, we will see it has the mounting distance. So mounting distance here is defined by 55. So it's from the base of the gear to the center line of the next gear. And then this one here has a mounting distance of 50. Um, it doesn't show you the line, but it's going to be measured the same way. So we could go ahead and put it in our assembly. So let's go ahead and download this one. And then we'll download the other one. And we'll open them up. Let's try the other one again. Okay, so these are our two gears. And we're going to make an assembly with the two. So we're going to go ahead and put in our bevel gear. And then insert our pinion. So what we're going to do is inside this part, we want to add uh, axis. And then if we look back to the big one, um, we know that there's a mounting distance of 50 millimeters. So we need to create a plane that's offset by 50 millimeters in the other direction. Okay, and then if we look at the other one, it's uh, 55, so from the base to the top. So we'll open up this one, and we could add an axis, and then we could create a plane relative to the base, and we could make this 55 millimeters in the other, other direction. Okay, so now that we have everything squared away, Let's float this. So first off, let's make a uh, main axis somewhere. So maybe the front and right plane. We could create an axis. And we're just doing this so we have something to anchor um, the center of that too. Okay, so that will be um, aligned. And then we want this to be on the top plane. 
Okay, so this is our gear. Right now it's free to rotate. And then for our other one, we want to align the axis. So this one has this axis. And we know that this axis should be in that mounting plane. So we could meet the two together. And then the other one, we could see that this axis should be in this plane. Okay, so it'll look something like this. And then our last mates, we could make that face, and then we could make it parallel to the right plane. Okay, so now if I view this, um, notice that this axis is still free to move, but it's constrained. Um, it's constrained everywhere else. So all we got to do is just add, we can make this axis maybe in the same plane as the front plane. Okay, so we can see that this gear is free to move, this gear is free to move, so now we need to um, link the two gears together. So we could create a mate, and then in our mechanical mates, we could choose gear, and we'll choose the big one first, and then the small one. And our ratio is going to be three to two. So now that we have it set up, we could try dragging it and you could see it move. So we could try reversing the direction. Okay, so yeah, this now, now looks better. And you can see that as we rotate, the spacing is, is good, because you can see that no matter where we turn the axis, um, the engagement of the teeth is still as we expect. Okay, so that's how you would put together a bevel gear in your assembly. And you can see everything is moving as expected. So. Uh, one thing to know is that these axes intersect. So if we were to um, extend this one out longer, and then if we extend out the other one longer, you can see that if I highlight the two, you can see the axis intersect in the center. Okay, but if we look at um, the different options we have, there's also uh, different shafts. Uh, orientations, you can have 45 degrees, 60 degrees, uh, 90 degrees, and 120. And then based on different requirements, you could go with uh, plastic, you could have hardened, hardened material for even stronger teeth. Um, and then the different shaft engagement could be keyed or not keyed, depending on how much torque there is. And there's also spiral gear, so the spiral ones have some better uh, noise and vibration properties. So you could choose those as well. Um, and then there's also some that has mounted on the shaft, but just depends on what you need to use. But at least for this, you could see how you could put in your assembly. So in terms of the other hardwares, like the bearings and the shaft, you would um, apply to put this in a full assembly. It's going to be the same concept that we talked about in the previous gear videos. Alright, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.